God give you peace. I'm Mark Delmonico, the Director of Certification for Ecclesial Ministry and Service at the USCCB. In that role, I resource the conference's Subcommittee on Certification for Ecclesial Ministry and Service. I recently had the opportunity to gather representatives from the subcommittee and some of the programs of certification approved by the subcommittee to discuss the importance and value of the certification process. In this excerpt of the larger conversation, Dr. David Lichter, Executive Director of the National Association of Catholic Chaplains, comments on how the work of the subcommittee and of dioceses and national organizations in establishing common certification standards benefits those preparing for ministry, those who assist in their preparation, and the church as a whole. Um, Dr. David Lichter, you are Executive Director of the National uh, Association of Catholic Chaplains, and you have developed over the years a process for certification which ensures quality ministry for those uh, in hospital chaplaincy or caregiving environments. Uh, how does that process work and how does it benefit those ministers who are seeking to be certified? Well, thank you. The uh, NACC was founded by the bishops right after Vatican II, 1965, and over the years have worked at uh, refining a process for certification. I think about the process in kind of three ways. One is just the very consensus development of the competencies. And so those who've been in the field have worked diligently at saying, what do we need to do this work? Mm -hmm. And that uh, develops a consensus process that creates, in a sense, a consistency. Because as if I were applying, I would have those set of competencies to know what I need to be and work at in order to bring myself forward to the association. Mm -hmm. uh, and so if, using this analogy, for instance, uh, say a rector stands up for the bishop at time of ordination and says to you, having spoken with those who've been charged with formation, I really feel this person is ready. Or the case also for permanent deacons, that they are ready. Uh, in many ways, as a national association, we're entrusted with that readiness. Mm -hmm. And so the competencies developed through consensus, a consistency of preparation and uh, interviewing, because each person, they, they present their portfolio and then come before three peers to present him or herself. So there's that, that's the, the, and that process is uh, strongly monitored. We have people who are engaged in uh, ongoing evaluation of the process. We have those engaged in the process provide evaluation. And so there's a consistency of process. And finally, there's ultimately a confirmation process where as the commission, they say, yes, they're ready. But that is all then provided to the bishop to say, you know, will you endorse this person? And so the bishop's endorsement is one hand saying, yes, this person is uh, in good standing with the church. But the other is there is an acknowledgement by him mm -hmm. that this association has taken seriously the process as much as the seminary took its process mm -hmm. through this certification to say this person is prepared not just to work professionally, but truly to be a representative and a minister of the church to continue the healing ministry. Thank you for listening. Be sure to check the slide at the end of today's video for additional details about the diocesan programs and organizations who work with the USCCB Subcommittee on Certification for Ecclesial Ministry and Service. And let's be sure to keep all those involved in ministry in our church today, laity and clergy, in our prayers. God bless. <music>